Okay, folks, it is 4.30, which means it is go time. Welcome to the UAlbany Weekend MBA Programs webinar series. I am Don Purdy, I'm the director of the Weekend MBA Program, and today's topic is value of an MBA in the investment brokerage industry, and our presenter today is none other than Elisa Quinn. I don't hesitate to ask questions at any time. We always welcome questions by either using the chat feature in the lower right-hand corner of the webinar software, or by sending me a message on Twitter, and my Twitter handle is at MBA. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Elisa. Elisa, welcome. Good afternoon, Don. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate uh, being on the call. Okay, today I've been asked to um, share my background information in terms of um, my own career path in hopes that it might help uh, the folks listening to think about um, what the value of an MBA is for their particular needs. And so um, I will share with you that um, my official title is First Vice President at UBS Financial Services, part of the Quinn Group. And my own professional background is that I went to um, uh, actually Union College, did my undergraduate work there, and have a degree in mechanical engineering and economics. It was a program at Union that was called Industrial Economics. So at the time, honestly, I was probably closer to in your shoes um, thinking about what is it that I really wanted to do and, and clearly wasn't uh, certain what uh, career path I wanted to follow, um, but knew that I was always very good in um, science and math and uh, very comfortable with uh, the technological uh, aspects of my um, academic career. So I kept the mechanical engineering even though thinking down the road may not be the direction that I uh, ultimately would pursue. And so um, one of the things that I think was extremely important was I got a job as a uh, freshman at uh, Union College and um, that was in a very technical field and I got a chance to see firsthand exactly um, what pursuing the more technical parts of my academic career would um, bring. And I decided right immediately after that internship that summer, my freshman year, to combine my major with economics. And having that industrial economics background really helped uh, steer me away from the more technical side of the engineering, but more to the business side of application. So um, for me, that was a really critical uh, turning point in my uh, academic career, just as you're thinking about whether to pursue an MBA. To me, it was a question of what was the right major for my fit later on. Uh, my first job out of Union College was in the computer industry, and it was at a time where personal computers were brand new on the market, um, so I'm dating myself. Uh, I did graduate in 1984, um, so it was a time where uh, technology was just burgeoning on the scene, and um, I found that uh, for three years I started off as a um, internal sales representative where I um, was able to help individuals with find the, the technological uh, personal computing needs for their home and, and small businesses. And then I moved on to the corporate side. So I went out to call on corporate businesses and the local business community um, and did that for about three years. After that, I actually met a woman who worked at Prudential Base at the time. And she was a member of the Women's and Business Professional uh, Club um, locally and uh, got a chance to chat with her about what her career was. And frankly, I did not have experience at all in the investment industry. My parents were big investors and um, there were very, very few women in the industry at the time. Um, but within, frankly, an hour lunch conversation, I felt that um, it was definitely something I wanted to explore and actually uh, did interview with uh, probably about five of the local um, investment brokerage firms in the area at the time. It was uh, uh, Shearson Lehman Brothers, uh, Merrill Lynch, E.F. Hutton, uh, First Albany, which was, these are all derivatives of a lot of the, the companies that we have today, including UBS, Merrill Lynch, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Wachovia, uh, and now Smith Barney. Um, and now Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. So there's been many, many changes of uh, all of these brokerage firms in the past uh, 20 years actually been in the industry. Once I uh, met with her, I decided that um, at the time I accepted my position with Shearson Lehman Brothers and uh, actually did all of my training on the um, World Trade Center, 104th floor, um, and uh, was there for eight weeks in terms of a very, very intense type of training program that was uh, fairly standard in the industry. Um, if you wanted to learn to be a financial advisor, 
you needed to go through this very extensive type of training. So in terms of that career path, I started, uh, again, at Shearson Lima Brothers at the time. I worked there for 22 of my 24 years um, as a sole practitioner, as a sole financial advisor. And um, the reality is about two years ago with the challenges within the industry, I decided to form um, the Quinn Group, which is uh, a team of three uh, women um, financial advisors, and together we decided that uh, we wanted to uh, explore the opportunities at another firm. Um, our team was recognized as the Barron's Winner Circle Top Women Advisors in the entire country, um, where we had the opportunity to meet with other top women advisor teams in the industry across all of the different firms, including Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, UBS, Bank of America, um, Merrill Lynch, um, all the independents, uh, Wells Fargo Wachovia. So it was a really interesting opportunity to get a chance to hear all of the, um, the different types of team structures that are in the business. And as a result, I came back and put together a team of these two other women. Um, the one woman um, is somebody that I had worked with in a strategic alliance over the past uh, 14 years. Um, when I was actually expecting a second child, um, was asked to take over the business of the, an old gentleman in the office and decided that uh, if I wanted to do that, I really wanted a team kind of approach. So um, my business partner came into business at that time and we had what would be called a strategic alliance. And a strategic alliance is really the opportunity to work side by side, each developing your own businesses, but also have the ability to have um, joint clients. So we did that for a couple of years, and then, as I said, about uh, two years ago, we really formalized the process, and uh, we actually hired a third uh, young woman who actually does have her MBA from SUNY, um, and uh, she was a very integral part of our team in the sense of uh, being having a different skill set, and for her skill set, it was to have um, the technological research-based analytical side to what we refer to as, as the inside person. My business partner and I are the outside salespeople and really have bottom line business as our ultimate goal, uh, whereas uh, our internal really focuses on the research and more of the analyticals um, to make our team work in that type of structure. So uh, about two years ago, we transitioned all together to UBS Financial Services and have been operating in a team structure ever since. And uh, I would say that that's, um, really been our whole uh, transition to work within that structure and we found it to be exceptionally positive in this uh, in this industry in this day and age in terms of what we need so there you have it that is my uh, full you know professional background um, I can share with you now um, some of the things in terms of the rewards uh, of why I chose uh, to be in this particular business and why I think you might uh, think about it or consider it um, First and foremost, I will say that a lot of people may really not um, understand and appreciate um, the entrepreneurial spirit type of, of um, career path that this really is. I think um, a lot of people might mistake it for more a financial and analytical path, and I would say first and foremost, um, it is a entrepreneurial business in the sense that when I went into training, they will give you all of the financial background. Certainly, I took financial courses when I was in college, but the reality is it really is a sales and marketing environment to do um, and develop what we call a, a book of business, meaning relationship management, building up individual um, business or foundation or endowment types of clients along the way. You are building that first and foremost. It is 100% like owning your own business, um, and that could be, you know, very rewarding in that uh, regard, but it truly is owning your own business, developing your own client base, and for me, that's one of the very, very exciting reasons I chose this particular industry. Um, I also felt very strongly about the way I'm compensated, um, because I was a woman starting in a business that I was one of 25 financial advisors in my office. Um, I was the only woman at the time, and when I did my training um, in the World Trade Center, there were actually 51 women in the whole um, East Coast uh, at the time, and within one year, I was the only woman left. Um, so it, 
is a double-edged sword in the sense that I loved it because it provided that entrepreneurial spirit, but it also is a very, very competitive um, type of industry in the sense that you really are building your business on your own and um, you have to have that sheer will and determination to, uh, to succeed. So I would say that's definitely one of the rewards. Um, in terms of flexible schedule uh, after building a business, um, I am a parent. I have two children. One is a senior in high school right now and uh, going to be going to a business school. Um, so clearly for me, uh, balancing work and family has been critically important for me. Um, I have a daughter who is now 14 years old. and. Um, for me, truthfully, I never want to miss a soccer game, a dance recital, a PTA meeting. Anything to do with my children is first and foremost for me personally, and I've always had that as a major priority. Um, but I've also wanted to be very competitive in terms of what I do. Um, but from that perspective, to me, having the flexibility, um, initially the hours were, I will say, grueling. We'll get to the challenging part in the next slide, but um, the, the initial ability to be flexible is and continues to be one of the main reasons I love it. Um, I'm not a morning person, so you know, even though I'm up very early, I'm, I'm multitasking, doing emails and um, doing technical things, but I do it home-based, um, and then I'll get to the office you know, mid-morning. Um, don't feel like I need to be there at the crack of dawn. Um, so I love the idea of having a flexible schedule, and as I say, you know, if my son has a soccer game, I'm not going to miss it. So um, I really feel very strongly about the, the flexible um, schedule um, as a very rewarding part of my career. Making a difference for me is critically important. Um, I work with, you know, within our team probably about 300 relationships, families um, across the country, in fact, even some across the world. Um, and I feel very strongly about being able to make a difference for the families that we work with. We tend to call each other our chief financial officer um, of each family, and from that perspective, you know, we really do make a difference in terms of um, what what needs our clients have, what wants they have, what wishes they have, what dreams they want. Um, we help people live their dreams. Um, we help people make sure they have the basic needs in life, um, but we also help people live their dreams, and we feel very strongly about uh, making a difference in their life. Um, the team structure and independent structure, for me, again, I enjoyed both. I enjoyed very, very much being an entrepreneur and being very independent. Um, I had a, you know, a fierce will and, and desire to succeed on my own. Um, and even though I had been approached by senior partners to, to team up with them, I did not feel it was the right fit at the time. So for uh, 22 uh, years, I really felt um, it was important for me to stay independent. Um, but with the changes in the industry, I also felt like I needed to do the right thing for our client base at the time, and I felt that was very much so to be able to have more than one person. So if I was out of the office, there would always be a backup person. So I now very much value the team structure, and that's worked out very, very well. The monetary compensation certainly is important. I would say for me, you know, it's never been about the money, um, but clearly I do want to, you know, make a difference for my family. I am, you know, a major breadwinner in the family, uh, along with my husband. We're a partnership, um, so I feel like I've at least been rewarded for the hard work that I have put in over the years. Um, and as I say, they have been grueling hours and intense uh, work environments for many, many, many years, but. Um, on the flip side, I have been rewarded uh, monetarily for that, and um, so Collate is one of the rewards. This ends part one of our conversation with Elisa Quinn on the value of an MBA in financial services. Please tune in to part two on YouTube, and you can also find us on iTunes. Have a great day.